Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another amazing creation from the Steam Workshop. This one is damn complicated. It's cool, it has multiple layers, and more importantly, it has things that detach from each other that can cause, well, all sorts of mischief in Space Engineers. So in the background, we have the STS Shuttle, as well as the Crawler. Now, both of these items have been developed by Octo Moose. So prepare your mooseness, because this one is getting a little bit crazy and out of hand. So we've got three segments to actually have a look at. We've got the Crawler down here at the second, that I've heard has a very, very bad fuel efficiency the real one that being we've got the pad here itself and then we have the shuttle as well as its tanks and boosters so let's actually have a look at the bottom here so we've got the crawler here itself you can see we've got these double track like structures on either side as well as various access ports now this thing moves extremely slowly but of course it does because it's transferring a hell of a lot of weight above there. I wouldn't want to be run over by this thing, I'll tell you that. I think you'd be that flat that you'd just be cracks within the pavement itself. So having a look over here, we have two cockpits. We have one at front and one at the back, as well as this really cool catwalk that leads you around here. So if I just drop myself onto the catwalk, you can see the actual scale against an engineer itself. So I'll just zoom out and you can just see how small I am compared to the rest of the shuttle and the platform. Absolutely fantastic. So to get this thing moving, I'm not going to move it too much because I've set it up already, but we can just turn the wheels on and off and we can increase or decrease the power of them wheels and their brakes. So like so, we roll that way very slowly, trying not to hit anything, and if we reverse the power in the other way, we're going to line ourselves up with that little marker that I've put there, try not to go over it too much, and there we go, hit the brake and we should be ready for the second stage. Now the second stage involves detaching our merge blocks. So our merge blocks have now been disconnected and the platform above us is now free. Now we're gonna hit this little button down here that'll extend the pistons out. So let's zoom ourselves out and you can see the pistons from the actual platform down there. They've had to be re and adjusted so they can actually push this platform up and you'll notice as soon as they do that, there's a little bit of sparking. Just, just ignore that, That's, everything's safe. The shuttle's going to be totally fine, I promise you. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit on the edge there. That doesn't look very safe at all. But here we go. We've actually got the station lifted up into the air. And now we are free to move the crawler. So once that's done, let's just prep our crawler to be moved. And let's speed out our acceleration. Maybe if we move to that side, we'd be able to see a bit more. No, we can't. So we need to just accelerate out with maximum crawler cruise control mode. Thank you, crawler. You've done a good job. You've moved us to the launch position next to the pads. Hopefully Clangs behaves well with me and doesn't destroy the whole platform. But you can see it just slowly crawls out of there. So we'll try not to get in the way of it as it moves itself out and underneath. And you can see it's got this little cool pad platform that's supposed to have us some sort of protection, I guess, to the platform above. Now, with that moving out like that, we need to fire the systems up. And this is a damn complicated process. Especially when you, you're holding on by a thin thread in some areas. If we come underneath here, you'll also notice that there's these really cool vents so that the, the actual thrust or the jet blast will come down into this area and won't cause any harm to the rest of the platform. You've got the same sort of thruster holes here as well. You've got some ventilation in different pockets. Very cool indeed. You won't want to be standing this close though when this thing is launched. So let's begin the takeoff protocol as the little shuttle goes off over to the edge there. Let's let's stop that thing actually because I don't want a disaster on my hands here. So we'll pop back into the cockpit and we're going to turn the speed down to zero and we'll hit our brakes on. So there we go. Everything should be static. Everything should be safe. Don't speak too soon, Aaron, at the moment. This little button on the side accesses the rear pod. Let's actually have a look over the shuttle before we decide to launch it. So we've got the main shuttle here itself. You notice the cockpit is tucked in here. There is no glass in there, so good luck getting through the atmosphere and not burning up. Thank God we're in space engineers. And you can see down on either side, we've got the little wing tips and the rocket boosters here at the rear. Now on the other side, we've got ourselves the fuel tank down the center, the big orange tank and we have got the boosters on either side there as well of course all detachable so let's just see how well this thing works and takes off so we'll grab ourselves into this cockpit i'm going to take this right position we're going to engage some of the systems but we're going to have to connect through the remote control box i'm not liking 
the sounds that are coming from below. I really ain't. So, let's fire up our engines. So, engine one, on. Oh, God, don't do that yet. Okay, let's wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've done it. I've messed it up. <laughs> this is why it needs some sort of locking system on the platform. We're going to have to uh, evade this situation as fast as we can. Also, rocket boosters have been disengaged, enabled and disabled. We've also got the larger tanks. Let's just do this as safely as possible and unlock the merge blocks and blast this thing off. So, Okay, there we go. There we go. We have light lift off. Woohoo! <laughs> right, now... Hold down that key and hope for the best because we've not got a very straight trajectory at all, have we? Because of our wonky platform launch. It took me a second to work out the controls and work out just how much we needed to boost everything. But it was as simple as turning it on and off. Let's have a view from inside our cockpit here. Yep, we're accelerating well. We've got access to the rest of the quarters there. Okay. Oh, there goes the rocket. Oh no, it's coming back down. I took my foot off the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. We now drift a little bit to the side, so we'll just correct that up and try to go with the straightest trajectory as possible. So there we go. All the thrusters are on. All of them are boosting. We'll begin the the separation now. So if we then we go eight, we shouldn't really begin the separation at this stage. We're just too low to the ground, but I wanted to do it early because it'll take us so long to get into the orbit. So we've separated the boosters. Now we need to separate the main pod. So there goes the main pod falling down behind us. And we have the shuttle in our hands. Very nice indeed. Hopefully they don't land on a small village or a poor space engineer that's trying to build his first item down there. That wouldn't be very pleasant for him. Let's get this into orbit and have a closer look at this ship. So now they're actually out in orbit. We're in a safe orbit. We're not falling back down to the planet. Nothing dodgy like that. We've got the shuttle here in front of us, and we're just going to navigate ourselves towards it nice and slowly, nice and safely, and we're going to access the payload doors. In fact, we're going to deploy the Hubble in the back here. So we've actually got the telescope and all its glory right in here. Let's come around the back and have a look at some of these rear boosters and various detach points as well. So you've got two detach points from the cells below that you can now see. There is no landing gears though, so you might want to be careful when you come into land, so to say. And we've got the RCS thrusters there, so we've got some control and movement. Now, if we drop into the payload area, we've got two buttons. We have the payload doors, so we can open and close. And below them, we also have the lights. So we've already got the lights on, so we'll turn them back on like that. If we now shuffle ourselves through this tiny airlock, we're now into the crew quarters. So it's a very simple, compact thing. You've got the cabin lights there. You've got various different modules here, and then you've got access to the cramped cockpit once again. And you've also got all the guides here. So if you need to know how to set off the controls and you don't want a disaster like my space launch, come in the back and read through the information before you release various different systems and it'll go well for you. Ah, fingers crossed anyway. Let's go into the cockpit and let's release the Hubble telescope though. So we're going to go to remote control. We're going to double check, go to G and check the payload release. So we've got the payload lights on, payload release. So let's release the payload. The payload has been released and now we're just going to move ourselves down from the payload. Okay. Now the payload should be accessible and we should be able to use that telescope. So let's just move ourselves out of the way. We're using our RCS modules and we'll close up the payload doors now that it's been delivered. So the next stage is accessing the remote control of the Hubble. So we're looking for that small grid, Hubble thrusters, Hubble remote control, and control. So you can see we've got control of the telescope now. So we of course have the big camera, and we can take a nice picture down of the Earth below. Now what this particular set would be great for is if you wanted to reenact this mission step by step and actually deliver that in a realistic manner instead of in my manner of just going a little bit crazy. So let's bring ourselves back out here into the now empty payload area. You could do various different missions with things in here, just like NASA do themselves. Well, let's pop the actual payload door open and head over to the, this telescope. Let's try to be careful not to drift off into space. And we also have the projector on here. So if I hit the projector, it activates this cool little feature. So the fake solar panels that you can then weld on and start building this telescope so it actually work and exist in Space Engineers without some of the issues, but very, very cool indeed. A lovely 
sort of collection of items that make a great mission if you're willing to try it. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and make sure you give a big like to these creators and check out their work. It will be linked down in the description below.